cool feature of PicoScope is being able to make your own reference waveforms. I use this a lot when I'm looking at cam crank correlations and comparing them to known good. Uh, it's a very neat feature. Pico 6, I used it a lot, and obviously it's in Pico 7. So I'm going to give you a quick overview of how to do it, and I think you'll find it interesting. Uh, first thing, just take note of the time base I've got set here. Now, one thing, out of all the manipulation we can do with the software with a signal, we can never change the time base. And the reason I'm telling you this is you'll see coming up as to why the reference waveform will look a little different. So this is a known good. It's 2005 or 2002, sorry, Nissan Altima 2.5. Known good cam and crank. And I want to make a reference waveform of it to compare to a vehicle that's in my shop that's giving me trouble. So let's open the file, which I do, and I'm going to go ahead and make the signal smaller and you'll see why. So we'll get everything just kind of set up the way we want. Then we want to come down here to reference waveform and we'll choose A first and I like to rename it to keep down on confusion. So A is the blue trace so we're going to name it good cam and I'm going to change the color of it and you'll you'll kind of see as the video goes on while I'm doing this and we want to save it uh, wherever your happy place is for your files I just have mine all dumped into all waveforms I can go back and find them so I'm going to put um, YT YouTube 1 we're going to save that and then we're going to go to B and turn on B and I'm going to save it as we're going to call it good crank and I'll change the color to that one to more like a purple and then we're going to save that one and I'll just name it YT2 okay so what's happened here is basically I've made an exact duplicate of the signal that was already there so now my reference waveform of my crank sensor is purple lavender and of my cam sensor is um, the yellow two ways you can utilize this I'm going to show you both ways um, one way we're going to do a dual scope view and one way we can put all put everything on the screen at the same time uh, that way works but it has its downfalls but I'm still going to show you okay so we have made reference of our known good so let's find our bad uh, chain issue so let's open this one so this is our suspect chain problem there again I'm just going to make the signal smaller maybe there it goes and see this one is 200 milliseconds for division that was the time it was captured at the known good was captured at 100 and the reason I'm telling you that is because once I pull up I want to get my reference waveforms now the way I'm showing you this is the first way this is basically putting everything on one screen so let's go to file and we have our YT1 and our YT2 so let's put them up and there they are and let's spread them out now do you see the difference that's all we've got of the known good because it was captured at a different time base there's enough there to do what we need to do but if they would have been captured at the same time base then we would have very similar looking uh, captures but just remember these two are in correlation or in time with each other and these two known uh, this is my suspected bad at the top and my known good at the bottom so we could kind of figure this out doing it this way let's get this out of the way first off 
Let's look at the cam sensor. You got one, three, four, two, then repeat. One, three, four, two, so on and so forth. So I can't move anything. If I move the screen, I move the whole screen. Now we can kind of look at this and kind of see the problem already. Let's just pick on the single here. And this is the suspected bad. You can kind of see the falling edge of the cam is lining up with the first toggle after the gap. And then our known good, we'll just go over here to this one. The falling edge of the single one is kind of in the middle of the gap. So that's evidence enough. And if you want to, you know, if you're really familiar and solid with the diagnosis, you know, that right there kind of tells you you're late. But one thing I really like to do is I like to have two scope views when I'm doing this, because then we can actually get in there and do some measuring. So we'll leave all this on the screen. We can um, edit it all down and take things off the screen as we need. So we go to view. We want to add a scope view. Now, whichever scope view is highlighted is the one you can control. So I want to start at scope view one. And scope view one, we want to leave, we want to take our references off. And we're going to rename it. Uh, that uh, we're going to rename it. Mm -hmm. Let's see, we're going to name it good. And then we'll go down here to scope view two. Actually, I think I have those backwards. Well, what we can do is we can easily fix that. We'll just put these two on and we're going to name, call it good. Then we'll go to scope view two and we're going to name it bad. And then we'll leave those on there. So now what we can do is we can, whichever one's highlighted, we can zoom it independently of the other one and where that can help is I'm kind of OCD when it comes to this stuff so if we're picking on slot one like we were we can move the corresponding slot one right above it and then you can kind of pull out a cursor and you can see the falling edge there we can separate these a little and then you can come up here and you can kind of even easier see how late that is compared to the good one now another thing where this comes in really handy is we could really get down in the weeds and we can do some measuring so we know that the camshaft repeats itself after one res revolution which would be 720 degrees so be one three four two then repeat one three four two so we'll highlight the top one put some rulers out um, we can just partition it twice. This is a little more than how to make the reference waveforms. We've actually done that, but this is kind of cool. This is kind of the main, main reason I use reference waveforms. I've used it more doing this than anything. So we can pick on the falling edge. Let's get, uh, let's zoom back out of the, down on this one. 
let's pick on the one with the three. So we've got one, three, four, two. And now what we could do is we could drag a cursor out to right there. And then we could drag a cursor out to where the one with the three with a falling edge lands. Then we could kind of line him up. So his falling edge is landing on the out, the first toggle, which is there. The known good lands in the middle. And you can see right there, that's about 16 degrees, maybe 17 degrees late. So if the falling edge on the good lands in the middle, and on the suspected bad, it's landing to the right of the middle, then we know that this cam is late. Um, it could be a stretch chain, it could jump a tooth, um, all the above. I don't remember exactly but let's just say if we take um, 360, I don't know if you guys can see my calculator, but I'm just on the screen here. And if you divide it by 22, because I think they can crank gear, 22 teeth on it, 16.36, um, so 16.68. So easy way to use cam and crank correlation, make a reference waveform, and then... Um, I think it's just super cool that you can compare it right on the screen. And if you were to save this, you save this file just like this, and you name it um, Cam Crank with Reference for so and so, um, and you email it to them or, or you post it somewhere. When they open it, it's going to open just like this. So the the setup's kind of already done for you so quick little how to for any of you guys interested maybe some new guys that's never done it maybe some older guys that kind of forgot the features there or if you like me i was a long time pico 6 guy and i'm you know getting into 7 a lot more so i kind of practice this stuff to make sure when the you know when the time comes i can get it done right or get it done in a timely manner and not sit and fumble things around. Um, cool feature. I don't know if all scopes have it, but obviously Pico does, and it, it works really good. And you can use this with any. You can make reference waveforms of anything, um, as long as it's a Pico capture, a PS data file. I get people that ask me for files, and I'll send them. Some people send me files, um, and I'm able to... Uh, you know, keep theirs as a known good, or I've sent people known goods and do stuff like this. So, one more feature of your scope. Hope you guys are using it. If not, now you know how. Um, don't forget, if you need anything Pico wise, to give my guys over at Auto Nerds a, a shout. They're there. Um, you can see them on Facebook, uh, autonerds.com. Obviously, I have a link in my description box. So, if you need anything, need any help, want to get involved with the forum, hit those guys up. They're there. And as always, thank you guys for watching and subscribing. And if any questions come up, anybody you see on Facebook, please share these videos. If you think they'll help or they've helped you, obviously share them. Uh, knowledge is power in this game, guys. You guys have a good one.